would you like to speak on some passages that have advent connection from the new testament ha uh, yeah i'm tempted there are a lot of passages that could be seen in connection with uh, jesus coming in the flesh for our redemption but maybe i'll talk about one and maybe mention another one maybe uh there is this passage let's look at it together in the writings of paul in the writings of paul chapter 4 paul is talking about the relationship of christians and the law etc and uh, how law in chapter 3 verse 24 he says so the law was our pedagogos law was our a guardian until christ came that we might be justified by faith so uh, you know the pedagogos uh paidea you know children were led by a servant in the house who would take somebody to take a child to uh, take care of the child till the child grows up so he is using that analogy to say the law the purpose of the law was to take us to christ once christ comes purpose of law is over and in that uh, context he continues to say uh, continues to uh, comes to galatians 4 uh, and then he, he talks about verse 4 Galatians 4:4 But when the set time had fully come it's taken a long time so some of us may want to ask why it took so long i mean for us it looks like long time but god prepared for the world for his coming so that when jesus came there were some signs pointing in that direction for those who had eyes to see uh, god sent his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship so this idea of fullness of time there was a time now if you ask me why i don't have the answer for that except that god knows that was the right time to prepare the world for his coming and in the fullness of time remember even when jesus began his public ministry mark 115 what we read there is first words as mark gives us the time is fulfilled the kingdom of god is at hand repent and believe the good news so now you are waiting 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 here it is time is come and before that the forerunner already this elijah had come john the baptizer and now the times fulfilled so god fulfills that time the times reaching their fulfillment in other words the coming of jesus is that god is bringing has brought his kingdom already inaugurated in christ jesus and we are in the kingdom time and we have to wait for us it may look like long but in god's timing fulfillment of that kingdom the second coming so the kingdom of god has been inaugurated in the fullness of time born of a woman humanity of jesus also there could be an allusion to the seed of the woman in genesis 3 you know jesus is that seed of the woman who will crush the serpent's head right so he's human in the right time god knows the right time Jesus has come. Now for us in history that's almost 2000 years ago or more than 2000 years ago. Right? And now we are living in the time of that king. The king has inaugurated the kingdom. We are living in that. We are called to live kingdom life now, not when we die and go to some place called heaven. That is the significance of the kingdom. And uh, uh, Paul in another passage, Philippians chapter 2 there he will talk about how christ who was god he became human not only became human he became a servant not only became a servant he went to the lowest point and he died for us so why does he give that story there it's not just to teach about humility it is to teach that we are called now now that the king has come and the kingdom has come we are called to follow this king who gives his life as a servant for the sake of others that is the calling of the church during this christmas season yes we should have celebrations and do whatever we want but we must realize the kingdom has come in jesus and the kingdom will come soon 
we can say come lord jesus yes we have uh, one more question on that line sir the apostles and the disciples never spoke about the birth of jesus this is a question from uh, one mr s sudarshan they never spoke about the commitment of mary and joseph and the challenges they went through yeah. can you explain uh, good question uh, we can't say the apostles did not speak about it because we really don't know what the apostles preached about uh if you think of the first century in three parts the first part we can think of it as the first century the time of the life of jesus and his public ministry we don't know exactly how much though people you know very glibly say 3 years 3 and a half years uh, that is not very clear uh but the first third of that century is a life of ministry of jesus then the second third is that passage where the apostles are preaching and we don't have any record of that what they're preaching except reflections in the book of acts and here and there and the letters of paul etc and then you have a third part where the gospels have been written now i believe the gospels themselves are part of what they were preaching these stories that uh, luke is writing luke was not one of the disciples of jesus right so all these stories were part of the stories different ones would have been preaching but generally their focus was not on the birth narratives was on the life of jesus the ministry of jesus and especially like for example you read the gospel of mark there's no mention of any birth narrative correct and john does not give a traditional birth narrative too the focus becomes the ministry of jesus and then the last week of the life of jesus death burial resurrection so you're right we don't have exactly what they preached but actually these stories may be reflecting what they preached that's how they ended up in the gospels